So let's continue with esters and talk about naming a special type of esters, so cyclic esters, which are called lactones. Okay. So notice that the oxygen of the ester group is inside a ring. When we do IUPAC naming, um, kind of the parent chain of the lactone or the parent word is 2 oxacycloalkanone. Okay, oxa portion just means oxygen in the ring at the two position. So if this is the two position, what do you think is going to be the one? The carbonyl carbon. Okay. In order to name this, we need to figure out what how how many how big the ring is. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. So like cyclohexane. Okay. So this would just be two oxa. Because we've got to indicate that it's a lactone, indicate that the oxygen is in the ring, cyclo hex anon. Okay. Two oxa cyclo hexanol. So now if we name this other lactone with a substituent, we number one, two, three, so that carbon has to be three. And the substituent at the three position is a tert butyl group. So it's three tert butyl, three tert butyl what? Two oxacyclo, it's a five membered ring, so that's cyclopentane, cyclopentanol. Two oxacyclopentanol. Okay, so let's transition now from esters to amides. Esters to amides. It's naming amides. Remember an amide is something where you have carbonyl carbon attached to a nitrogen. It can be NH2 or the nitrogen can have one or two alkyl groups bonded to it. Okay? Alright. So very similar. We're going to name it, we're going to replace the acid part, so acid portion of the name. We're going to replace the acid portion of the name, which would be, you know, Oic acid, etc. Okay. With amid. Okay, that's it. So, for example, if we look at this carboxylic acid, it's two carbons, ethanoic acid. Now let's look at the amide version. Okay. <clears throat> so instead of ethanoic acid, it's going to be what? Ethanamide. Okay, so we replace the oic acid with the amide. Ethanamide. Now, we have to get a little bit more complicated with it with our nitrogen has something other than hydrogen bonded to it. Okay, so let's look at it. So we denote the group or groups attached to nitrogen write it out. With a big N. Okay, italicized N. So here's an example.
So our acid portion has one, two, three, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five carbons. Okay, so pentanoic acid. It would be, if it was a primary amin, it would just be pentanamide or pentanamide. But this nitrogen has a methyl group and an ethyl group attached to it. We need to indicate in the, that in our name at the very beginning of the name. So ethyl comes before methyl alphabetically. So it'll be N ethyl. Okay. N methyl. What? Pentanamide, right? I think we need a comma there. Let's do a dash. <coughs> Pentanamide. N ethyl, N methyl. Pentanamide. What if instead of ethyl, we had another methyl group there? How do you think you would name it? We have to still indicate both methyl groups there. We can't just say N methyl. We have to say N N dimethyl pentanamide. For example, that would be. N N dimethyl pentanamide. We need both ends saying it's attached. We have two of them attached. If it was like that, it would just be N methyl pentanamide. <clears throat> so just like we had cyclic esters, we can also have cyclic amides. So naming cyclic amides. Okay. The ester version was called lactones. Cyclic amides are called lactams. Okay. With esters, kind of the root word was two oxa, right? Two oxa here it's going to be 2 aza cycloalkanol. 2 aza instead of oxa. Aza indicates nitrogen in the ring. Cycloalkanol. Okay. See if I got an example. What about this guy? What about this lactam? So if this is two, this will be one, in case we had substituents. But it's just two aza. It's a five-membered ring, cyclopentanol. Two aza, cyclopentanol. If we had substituents here on the ring, we would put them out here. If we had something other than a hydrogen there, we would put it out front with an N in front of it, dicta telling us that it's bonded to the nitrogen. So like N-ethyl-2-aza-cyclopentanol. <coughs> 